Good afternoon once again. Uh, welcome to episode 822. And the topic today is going to be a different spin. I did a couple recently about the breakup and getting over it and everything else. I thought, let's start at the other end. The topic today is about first dates and to stop asking pointless questions and what to ask and what to say in a conscious first date. And I'm using conscious in quotes to mean something more uh, usable. So before I jump into the topic at hand and give you a bunch of suggestions. <laughs> Let me introduce myself first and explain why I do what I do and who I am and stuff like that. My name is Barry Selby. Surprise, surprise. My name is somewhere in this broadcast. And I am an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert helping women create balance and love life and business. I help the guys too because they listen in and get some tips. Um, I am also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. It's a useful book for everybody. That's good marketing, you know. Um, <laughs> and I'm, pa I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. That's a lesson I keep learning. It's a journey I'm on continually. It also what informs my work and inspires these talks I've done every day now for over two years, two and a half years. In fact, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring the Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 822 and I want to speak about first dates. And I'm going to leave off the table, I think I'm going to leave off the, off the table, the ability to create a first date and having decent first dates. But I want to speak to the content because for many people, maybe not you, but for many people, that first date experience is oftentimes, um, <laughs> I was going to say, instantly forgettable. I mean it from the point of view is that the conversation, the communication oftentimes doesn't go very deep. For a lot of people, again, not you, but somebody you know, that first date experience is almost just getting over first date nerves and just trying to be comfortable in front of the other person. So there's no deep sharing, no deep opening up to anything beyond just the surface content of what do you do for a living, where do you live, and uh, where do you grow up, something like that. What I'm suggesting though is maybe for some of you it might be taking a risk. But if I know you, and I know quite a few people, people watch me, this is kind of what you honestly live for but what you definitely get value from. So my invitation is to take some of these to heart and consider some because some of these may not make sense to you, but I'm gonna play with some ideas and talk about what the value of this can be and how it'll make your dating experience way more memorable, um, way more effective, and perhaps create some amazing results in your life as well in and outside a relationship because some of these things will open up some new spaces. I'll get to that in a minute. So for example, one of the questions I've had um, on my list of things to say is, um, well, this one's, this one, <laughs> um, let me say this. Yes, okay, I'm, I'm deciding which one to start with. So let's, the first question is, um, and I've had this one in my heart for a long time, because it's always fun to play with. And I'm talking about this as a, and by the way, I'm pretexting this, that you're talking about this um, on a dating experience, first date as adults. Because the question I often ask is, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> because that question opens up a whole different conversation. Many I say that because for other people, they haven't, actually, they haven't actually done what they wanted to do in life. And this is a question that can lead to things like, what is your purpose? What is your vision? What do you want to be when you get to whatever it is you want to be? Because that's not a question people ask oftentimes. And if you say it in the context, and I play with that one saying myself, and you're free to use it yourself, is what do you want to be when you grow up? It gives us the freedom to play with it. It gives us the freedom to ask the, ask the, answer, try again, answer the question from a different place than, well, my mission and purpose is to do this and this, which some, which, or I guess me personally, I tend to own a lot. <laughs> Maybe you don't, but I do. But when you say what do you be when you grow up, it has the invitation and the, um, the nudge, so to speak, to play with it. Because... The implication is you haven't grown up yet, which is good news. It's free to play and still be in your joy and celebration of life as well. But it also might be a thing you've never thought about for a while. Maybe you've been in a job that's been running for the last 10 years and you still don't feel fulfilled because you haven't thought about what you want to be when you grow up. What might that be? Might, be, might it be that you want to run a company? Might it, may, might it be that you want to explore the world? Who knows? But asking the question can open up a whole new dialogue because when you start doing that, first of all, it does open up the conversation to go deeper. Secondly, you actually get to know, in fact, you might get to know what it is that somebody's true heart is calling them to be. And maybe they didn't even face that until you talked about it. So you could have actually an incredible elational, elational? 
elating, that's a better word, experience, maybe even a healing one with this new person you're going on a date with. So what do you want to be when you grow up? That's a good question. Another one I play with, which is a much deeper question, and it's a trick question, is in your perception, does life happen to you or does life happen from you? Because for a lot of people, and this is the Beck the Codependency conversation I've had many times before in my talks, when people like it, like, because when you say, well, you know, the, the, the police did it to me, the iris did it to me, the, the weather did it to me, the, the traffic did it, you know, those sort of things, that's that place of saying life did it to me. And that is a victim role, as you may have guessed from what I'm saying. It's the painful side of codependency. Some people would say, no, life happens from me. I take, I take charge, get it done, make things happen. Well, that's the ego position. Also not accurate. And I'll tell you the secret in a moment. So you're playing this dance of, well, if life doesn't happen to me and life doesn't happen from me, how does life happen? The way I'd speak about this, and it's a spiritual principle, by the way, if life, is life happens through me. And that's a whole different perspective. What it means is that we get to be on the ride in this journey of life. We get to be explorers in life, and we're not in charge necessarily, but also not victims. We get to witness, observe, and respond to life and play with life in a way that, again, is a dance, kind of like I said in the first question. If you may have guessed, these questions are intended to go deep, which they do, and also tending to go beyond the surface because for many of us, we have this presentation of how things are. And when you're on a date, no matter whether it's a first date or a friend date even, these sort of questions can evoke a much deeper opening of conversation and take you much deeper. Just had a quick side thought. There is, a, there is an article that's been on the web for a while now. It's something like the 35, 36 questions you can ask somebody that make, you, make, you, make them fall in love with you. I'm not speaking about, speaking about that necessarily because my <laughs> invitation for your first date isn't about falling in love. I recommend you get to know somebody before you fall in love with them because sometimes love is blind. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning who just told me she was done after she had a really wonderful relationship, excuse me, one really wonderful first few dates, it wasn't a relationship, first few dates last week with somebody she met and had great initial rapport with and connection with and intimacy in the conversation. But then this week it's like, done. So my thought was, what if you go deeper with your questions? First of all, you'd find it much faster, much faster, by the way, if in fact you want to be with this person, because some of those answers will be very telling. <laughs> and you don't need to express what the answers should be. But by listening to them, you're going to find out some things that may just open your eyes to what they are about that doesn't match what you want. So there's two questions you can throw out there. Another question you can play with, which is really, um, I'm going to say it this way, Puts another spin on things is, is if you ran the world, how would you play? Now this is a big question, obviously, but the question is, if you ran the world, and you might want to say, well, if you ran this town, if you ran this country, you could play with any level of this, because there's another piece where people haven't necessarily thought of it. I I didn't think of it very often, and you probably haven't either. But if you ask the question, what would you do if you ran the world? Now these are obviously not romantic questions. It's not about that. This is a first date. This is exploration. This is, this, is a, this is surveying the person to see if they fit your paradigm, if there's a match here, if there's an energetic desire to go on a second date. And by the way, let me, let me sidebar for a second. I need, I need to give you this piece of the information. So <laughs> the first date I speak about, I've always talked about, frankly, having a pre-date because the first date traditionally is a evening romantic financial investment type date, which I recommend as being your second date because maybe speaking from a guy not want to spend tons of money on my dates, which I've done in the past, having the ability to have a pre-date, which I've talked about, and this is also for the women for safety, by the way, because some of you ladies have had some pretty challenging dates, I know, is when you go on a date, your first date, or I call it a pre-date, is you make it something that is social, daytime, active, inexpensive, public environment, and playful. Because when you have this understanding where you can meet somebody at a coffee shop or an ice cream bar, as one of my friends talks about, and you can have something fun that's social, it's not alcoholically induced, which is a good thing as well. It's a public space so you can feel safe. It's daytime so you get a good look at the person because sometimes your first date's in a darkened restaurant may not be as telling as when you see them in daylight. You know what I mean. So having an environment that is um, conducive to meet somebody in a clean, neutral, safe space and not be too heavily invested in going out with them so you can actually see if you like them and then go on a date. So this conversation I'm talking about, these questions I suggest, will be ideally offered in that environment first, before going on a real date, so to speak, where you go out romantic and you dress up and you have time, a good time, whatever that is. 
frankly, for some people, that may not happen to the tenth date, because maybe there's other dates in between. Are uh, you go for a picnic? You go for a hike? You go for a walk on the beach? You go and um, go to the farmers market? There's all sorts of things you can do that are inexpensive dating experiences. We get to know somebody's style and how they are, how they interact, how they're around other people. Those are those are all test drives. I mean, frankly, isn't dating really a test driving somebody to see if they're a good match? That's what I feel it is for the first few dates. So back to questions. So again, first question I recommended is um, is what was I did, uh, <laughs> Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Was the first question. Second question is um, does life happen to you or from you? Again, the trick question because the answer really is life works comes life happens through us, which is good. And third question, which is if you run the world, what would you do? How would you act? Hi, Stacy. Nice to see my broadcast. Your tips are good, but when you harness, whoops. Oh, by the way, it's a Facebook Live, so I'm just reading people's questions here. I'll tell you about the links at the end of this. Your tips are good, but when you harness intuition, you can truly tap in clearly. This is why intuition is so valuable. Thanks for your video, Barry. You like the test drive suggestions. You're very welcome, Stacy. I appreciate that. And this is the thing, is that some of us, maybe it's just the men. <laughs> Sorry, get this out of the way. Okay, um, maybe it's just the men. I don't want to speak for the women. Maybe our intuition is that not that fine-tuned. I do have I do have really strong hunches now. That's because of the practice I've done in my work for these many years of being spiritually tuned in. After twenty years of being a spiritual counselor, my sensitivity is getting pretty good at this. But I know women's intuition can be way better than that. Just to be clear, so I'm suggesting suggesting these questions because they open exploration. These questions are not the light questions. Are like you know, what do you do for a living? Where were you born? You know that sort of thing. These are questions that can, and none of these questions, frankly, are fact-based questions. But you're not saying, you know, tell me about you. They're more telling me about what you like to be about. What do, what drives you? How do you feel? Because those sort of questions, when you take them to that level, and you can come up with your own questions based on those thematics, you will transform your interaction, and you'll open up the space for a much more um, valuable conversation. So thank you for the love, Stacey. I appreciate that. So having the opportunity to explore both the other person and your own, because if you have the question back to yourself, you may come up with answers you didn't expect. So it's a good chance to explore and play with and dance with this understanding of how do you get to know somebody. Authenticity. Absolutely, Stacey. I agree with you. Authenticity is the fundamental. I mean, that's the core of my message all the time, the core of my work, and what I tend to be as best I can when I do these Facebook Lives is be authentic and true because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to pull the wall over your eyes. You're far from it, I'm actually here to take the wall off your eyes so you see clearly. So my passion is helping you get some clarity about life, about love, and everything else. So authenticity is definitely part of my focus, my work. So thank you for the feedback, and thank you for your thoughts too. So another piece I want to add to this, there's another question that's been hovering, so let me see if it comes through. So that's, that's three questions. And again, these are ones to play with, and I did say these can go beyond dating. So these are questions you can have with your deep friends. When you're out with friends, why not have a rich conversation that evokes a whole level, a level, a whole understanding of what we believe? Because frankly, there are friendships out there that are stronger because of these sort of questions. And there are also friendships that got away because questions didn't fit. So you've got the three questions. Let me see if there's a fourth one. I, I did have one on my floating around. If nothing else, these three questions will start a whole new conversation. So they were definitely worth playing with. Um, there was one other question I wanted to have in there. Let me see if it comes up. And if you have any questions, by the way, well, if you have questions about this talk, please put them below. If you have any questions that you would think would be good dating questions, put like date question on the front of it sort of thing, suggest those too, because I'm open to adding to the list. These are, these are not the only questions to ask. I'm just giving you some starter points. So these are intended to give you some suggestions where to start from. And I did put in the heading like conscious date because I didn't have another word to put it because it's basically it awakened or awoke up, awoke date. That doesn't work. So I'm using that term loosely. So what have you term as a conscious connection, conscious date? I hope it, this is kind of adding to that. So just want to be clear that what I'm suggesting here is not the right ones, but just offerings of suggestions to give you some points of view and some questions you can dance with and play from. Because if you especially have gone on an early initial meeting with somebody new, call it a date or call it whatever you want, having the resources to draw from, questions that you can use and speak from that really are um, provocative, then it helps you have much more fun, but also gets to get you some clarity about whether that person is somebody you want to play with. 
whether it's romantic or friendship or anything, business even, frankly. Hmm. Yeah, those three questions so far I've offered could work in business environments too. If you're looking to hire somebody to work for you, or if you're looking to work with somebody else, maybe you want to ask these questions to see if you're on the same page. Because if you know where you stand on these questions and you find that somebody else doesn't, that's a good point to maybe consider not being with them. If this is in partnership, relationship, business, any of that stuff. So taking to heart or taking into awareness questions you can ask, questions you can choose to ask that provoke, no, inspire is a better word. <laughs> they might provoke too. Inspires interesting answers and responses that take the dialogue deeper. You know, I, I posted a, a meme yesterday, the day before, recently, about, you know, I don't want, don't want to deal with small talk. You want to talk about, you know, the universe and, and atoms and molecules and sparks and, and transformation, these sort of things. Having been for myself in the transformational industry, if that's the word for it, or personal growth industry since the mid 80s, it definitely evokes a desire to go deeper. So, hi right, Stacey, you get more questions, what are you seeing here? So you like, you like questions like, where is the most favorite place you've traveled and why? What lights you up, what breaks your heart? Those are great, I love those questions. In fact, yes, thank you. There was something about travel that was in my head, so you actually, you said the, you asked the, you asked the question I would recommend to ask as well, is about where's the most favorite place you've traveled to? This brings up another point. <laughs> I was with a friend of mine a couple of days ago and she said about what you look for in a partner. She was asking me this question. And I said, frankly, one of the qualities I'm looking for a partner is she has a passport. And the way I say that is because there are people I've met in this town, LA, and I'm sure there's all over the world too, where some people have actually never had a passport or let the passport expire because they never traveled. And I let my passport expire when I was here and didn't have that. So for me, asking the question about where you've traveled to, because if your favorite place to travel is less than 10 miles away, your worldview may be a little bit um, limited. <laughs> you have a passport. Yes, good, Stacey, I appreciate that. I mean, ideally it's one you've used, but if you at least you have one, it's, it's the thoughts in the direction of traveling. So I have a friend of mine, um, who I love dearly, a dear, dear friend of mine, she's a powerful women's coach and leader, and she had a goal. She's, I'm not saying who it is, just for privacy, but she is 40, just turned 49, I think. And she had a goal to do 50, she had a, a goal called 50 by 50. She wanted to travel to 50 countries by the age of 50. And she's about, she's in the mid twenties right now, I think. I think she said she was. But the idea of having that desire to travel, now obviously it's a financial investment, but having the choice to travel, first of all, you know, this is a whole other conversation now, but still I want to put it out there. Because again, worldview is important, as I mentioned about if you ran the world, what would you do? For some people, because they've lived within the same 10 mile radius and they travel in the 10 mile radius they were born in, their worldview may not be very big. Yes, they may have had some um, interest in world news, but if they haven't traveled outside the country or outside their location, they may not have an experience of what the world is like. Now, I'm speaking from a selfish point of view. I've lived in four countries, including the one I grew up in, just to be clear. So I've had enough of an experience of the world and exposed to the world to realize how much I don't know. Actually, I've traveled to two other countries too, so six. But I don't have a worldview of everything. No, I haven't been to Asia, I haven't been to Australia, so there's other places I haven't been to yet. But what I do recognize is there's more to know. And the biggest part, I think, about having a passport and having used it and traveling, so as, as Stacey said, wherever you travel to, what's your favorite place, favorite, favorite, place, favorite place to go? Having that understanding that there's a bigger world out there than we know one, it's very humbling. Two, it's very exposing us to know that we don't know everything so we can learn and we can grow and there can be a hunger for that, which again, is a good question to find out from somebody you meet. Because again, if you're on dates with somebody or even working with them, as I mentioned, some of these questions can be very pivotal. And to understand somebody's worldview that is more than 10 mile radius is also very telling. So if you, ha if you meet somebody who has traveled at least one other country or at least one other state, if you're in the United States, because I know some people haven't even lived outside the country, it adds another quality to the conversation. So these questions are starting points. Again, I don't have a whole like book to give you questions. No, I'm not gonna write one of those. I've got another book brewing already and that's not it. <laughs> but it gives you the idea that there's opportunities to express, to understand, and to get to know somebody from a much deeper place than just the simpler questions. So next time you're on a date, or even with your partner, if you're in a relationship now, 
You've been to Australia and to New Zealand, not Asia just yet, yet either. Well, see, see Stacey, <laughs> there's more to explore. And so I, I understand and I feel that way too. And my concern, I was talking to a friend of mine today who's English as well. We were at Agape this morning and I said, one of the things that's going on for me is because what's happening with Brexit, I'm very much aware of what's happening with Brexit, is I have a European English passport because England's been in the EU for a bunch of, for a long time. So my passport went from the blue one originally to the red one, which is the European English passport. After October 31st, I don't know if I'll be able to keep it or not. So I'm looking at what travel plans I want to make with my current passport before it either expires or gets transformed into a new one. Because I don't know what's going to happen. We don't, none of us know really what's going to happen with our passports because we don't know if Brexit's going to really happen. There's still a bunch of debate about Article 50. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. So to summarize, to put this to, put this to completion, is the questions I suggested, which was four, including the one Stacy gave me. Thank you, Stacy, for that. But also other questions you can come up with that will evoke and inspire a deeper conversation, a way more fun, way more telling, and way more informative for yourself and for the person you're with to get to know them better. So play with this. I invite you, up, I, I challenge you, I, I, I maybe I'm invoking you to use this out in the dating world and see what happens because you might find yourself discovering a whole new quality of connection, of relationship, of, of intimacy, from asking questions that go deep because we don't know how long we're on the planet for. I was going to go deep for that one for a second. So why not make the most of every morsel? And if you're not on dates, I think it's worthwhile making the most of the time you spend together because frankly, why not? So with that, I thank you for watching this broadcast. This is my daily chat, my daily invitation, my daily reminder about love and relationships that I love the fact you interact with and you watch and you share and you, and you inspire yourselves with this too. So first of all, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, why not? <laughs> so I'm going to give you the um, replays and I'm also going to put some links in the comments for you as well. Um, replays. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, this is my daily chat, Facebook Live, 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. Feel free to join me live and interact. You can ask questions, etc., etc. If you want to watch the replays, because there are plenty out there, this is number 822, you can find them in two places. One place is on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can certainly interact with those videos and put comments and stuff as well. Um, I also have them on my, and please like my page. I have to remember to say like my page. Also my YouTube channel, which is more easily scannable or viewable for questions. So yes, the three questions in the, in the replay. Thank you, Stacey, for following up. Um, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, as all my social media is my name. So youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. On there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel. I have to remember to keep saying that too. Subscribe to my channel. You can watch on there if you want to watch on YouTube. It is an easier place to search for broadcasts, by the way, because the titles are stored closer together. Facebook's not so friendly that way. So I hope this makes some sense to you. So watch the replays in either place. And some links I'll put in the comments for you. I did mention my book at the beginning, so that's going to be in the comments. That'll help you with your dating experiences. Um, I'll also put in the comments the two things I've been putting out recently, which is a link to have a chat with me. If you're having challenges on a dating experience, you want to get some more help. This one's for the ladies in particular. Um, I put a link in the comments for a conversation, a complimentary conversation with me, so you can find out more about how I work. And also I can give you some clarity guidance in the, to in the talk we have to get you started and also offer what you can, what, how we can work together if you want to. So that's that one. And third one, as I'm really finding this is vital to everybody out there, I'm putting in my self-love practice in the, in the comments too. It's a guided meditation, two guided meditations that I put together with my voice, AM and PM meditation, plus a workbook or a guidebook rather to help you get going. It's a simple, powerful solution to get you back in love with yourself. So that in the comments as well. And that, I think, is that. I appreciate you watching. Again, if you have questions or if you want to add any questions to my list, please put them in the comments below and I'll look at them after I sign off. I appreciate you being with me as always. I thank you for watching and uh, have fun out there. Dating can be fun when you take it on to play and go deep. So with that, I thank you for watching again. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.